All right, thank you everyone for joining. Um, my name is Eden. Thank you all for uh, joining the fourth webinar in World Learning SIT's webinar series, ELT Classroom Connections. Today's webinar, Optimizing Teacher Talk, Considerations and Choices, will explore teacher talk in the EFL ESL classroom, helping you all reflect on your beliefs and practices. By considering teacher moves, evaluating received wisdom, analyzing and improving transcripts, and working with terminology and concepts related to teacher talk, our presenter, Mike Griffin, will help you discover ways to make more informed choices about your teacher talk. You can expect to walk away from today's webinar with new insights, questions to ponder, and an action plan for teacher talk in your future webinars. So you can look forward to an interactive session full of practical tools that will make you um, think, discuss, and plan for your next sessions. This webinar is presented by World Learning Inc. For over 90 years, World Learning has offered an array of TESOL programming, including intensive and customized training courses, leadership building, professional development for teachers, and educational system strengthening. We believe that when teachers are better educated and better equipped, they are better positioned to motivate and empower their students in their language learning. World Learning is excited to offer this webinar series as an additional resource. So well, while we wait for Eden to come to come back, um, let's let's take a quick look. I have some questions that I think are interesting to think about. Um, so you can take a minute to to think about these questions. You don't have to answer in the chat or anywhere, but just think about them for a few minutes. And again, you don't have to answer uh, any of these questions, but they might give you a little bit of a guide uh, of what's coming and some things I hope that you'll be you'll be thinking about throughout throughout the session. So I think I'll I'll move along for now, and we'll I'll I'll hand the microphone back to Eden when when she comes back and she's ready ready to speak with us. So here we are in our in our webinar uh, with the topic of optimizing teacher talk. And as Eden said, I want to give you some ideas, some questions. That's a big focus for me: is questions and considerations for you to think about before you teach and while you teach, and even to reflect on after you teach. Um, so to get started here. Uh, please type into the chat your name, where you are, and what you hope to learn in this webinar. Welcome, Lisa. Thank you for being first to type. I'll await others others to sit, tell us where they are, their name, and what they're hoping to learn today. A few people mentioned other views and ideas. I think that's uh, that's kind of what I'm aiming for. Hello, Jenya. Welcome. Um, so let me let me walk you through this, uh, what I'm expecting to do today, um, and to give you a few ideas about uh, my plan. So here's here's the session agenda. It seems like quite a lot to do in 90 minutes. So sometimes I'll go a little bit quickly. I do promise to have time for for questions at at the end. <laughs> So that's just a quick look at our session at our session plan. There will be two moments of uh, breakout rooms where you'll work with other other participants, other audience members. And before we move on, some kind of uh, thank you everybody for for writing their welcome messages. It's nice to see them coming in. Mohammed says he hopes to control teacher talking time. TTT. Oh, this term is coming up. Thank you. Here's a little bit of a background on this session and some kind of what to expect and maybe a little bit of a warning. Uh, the first one there, you can see some of the bad examples come from me. Uh, so I feel a little bit bold to be talking to 70, 50 people about how to do teacher talk because I'm I'm not perfect. But, but I have been thinking about it for a long time and I have some ideas that I hope might help you to make decisions for yourself. Um, what I really wanna do again is give you things to think about try and find some balance of thinking about teacher talk. Often we hear teacher talk is bad, teacher talking time is bad, we need to eliminate it. And I wanna try and find a little bit more balance and nuance with that. Sometimes maybe I'll be a little too simplified and you can say, oh, Mike, that's too simplified, but that's okay. And that's your, <laughs> that's your choice, how you wanna think of it. 
<laughs> Matthew says he he too talks too much about not talking too much. This is maybe a trainer trainer's curse, right? Um, so you can see at the bottom there uh, what what I'm hoping for you to be able to do by the end of the session: identify suboptimal. This is the polite way of saying bad, but what's bad for me might not be bad for you, and vice versa. So um, that's that's where we are. Um, as we as we move on here. Um, I often think about, uh, I know we have many teacher trainers here. Uh, I often think about this field of, of EFL, ESL, TESOL. There's so many terms to get our heads around and understand and so many acronyms and we always are making up new acronyms and it gets a little bit difficult. And it turns into a little bit something like um, alphabet soup. <laughs> so part of learning about the field, we, we feel the need to learn all these new terms uh, TTT, we've already discussed all of these all of these other terms that, that come up. So on my next on my next slide here, I have some terms that I think are important related to teacher talk. You don't have to know all of these terms. <laughs> you don't have to know all of these terms now or ever, but hopefully by the end of the session, you will be a little bit familiar with them um, because it's my promise that I'll mention all of them sometime during the session. So that's my that's my promise. You can hold me to it. If at the end of the session I didn't mention one of these terms, you can say, Mike, what happened? Um, and once again, we'll have time for questions at the end. So if you need a little bit more input on some of the terms, that's a good time for that. So here's the terms. And my question for you to type in the chat uh, is which term looks most unfamiliar, unusual, unfamiliar, strange to you. Please type in the chat. And if they're all familiar to you, you can say none. Thank you, Dennis. TWT seems to be a popular one. We'll, we'll wait, we'll wait on that one. Okay, TWT seems to be a popular one, six and seven. Oh, okay, thank you very much. Um, what I'd like to talk about now, I'd like to talk about display question and real question. Nobody mentioned it, but this seems to be important for teachers and many people tend to wonder about them. Um, as I do this uh, display question and real question, I'll just give a, an example. So I need a volunteer. <laughs> uh, so I'll take a moment and ask some questions to a volunteer. You'll turn your microphone on and I'll ask you some questions so as to highlight the difference between display questions and real questions. So if you'd like to volunteer, please type me into the chat. I'm, go I'm gonna go with Alina because I know her. Uh, T-H-A-Z-H, we'll, we'll come to you later. So Alina, please turn your microphone on. Okay. Okay, welcome Alina, thank you for coming. Um, I'd like to ask you a few questions. Sure. Uh, Alina, what's the past tense of eat in English? Oh, it's, I believe it's eight. Eight, good, good, good job. You got it, nice, perfect. And Alina, what, what did you eat for breakfast? I had some fried potatoes with eggs. Okay, and you're, you're in Japan, right? Yes. Is that a common breakfast in Japan? No, no, I, I'm, my husband's Irish, so we love potatoes. Okay, all right, interesting, thank you. Don't go anywhere, Alina. I have another question for you. Alina, what's two plus two? Um, I believe that that's four. Correct, correct. You got it. Perfect. And Alina, how many siblings do you have? Uh, none. I'm the only child. You're the only child. Okay. Um, thank you for that. Thank you, Alina. Let's all give Alina a round of applause for her wonderful participation. Um, so what I want to highlight here with the distinction between display questions and real questions is that with a real question, I don't know the answer. I don't know what she had for breakfast and I don't know about her siblings. So it's a real question in the sense that uh, the, the information is new to me. Uh, with a display question, I know the answer, I hope. I hope I know two plus two, right? So I'm getting her to show me that she knows the, the answer. People are clapping for you still, Alina. Wonderful work. Um, so you might think, you might try and think when you think about your teacher talk, do I have a good balance of display questions and real questions? Um, one quick note, real question is sometimes called referential question. It's the same thing, just a different name. 
Uh, so if you're thinking about your teacher talk, you can reflect on the percentage of real questions that you ask. In my experience, this is um, a, a nice thing to think about. And I don't, but I don't want to say that display questions are bad and wrong and we shouldn't do them. I want to say we can try and find some balance with them. Uh, so next, I'd like to take a look at some examples that I wrote. Some are a little bit silly. Uh, some examples that I wrote of teacher talk. And what we'll do, I'll put you into a breakout room and I'll ask you to work with your, with your group in a breakout room and uh, find, <laughs> find what you think is a problem or a potential problem uh, with, with the teacher talk used. So here I'm putting the task into the chat. I'll also put the link into the chat here uh, for everybody. And your job will be to say hello to the people in the room and then uh, find, find the problems, potential problems with the teacher talk there. There's really no right answer. Whatever answer you think <laughs> is, is also a possible answer. So then we'll, we'll talk about this later. So I will make a breakout rooms for everybody. Welcome back. Almost everybody's back. Everybody's back. Okay. I think we had a little bit of technical difficulties, <laughs> um, but uh, I did hear some I did hear some nice analysis of of my examples there. So um, what I'd like to do is just take a minute here and ask people to share any problems, <laughs> any problems that they saw. Someone, someone wrote uh, oversharing and irrelevant. <laughs> I think that's a nice, <laughs> that's a nice explanation of one of them. So what other problems did we see? in the transcripts there. Redundant ICQs and CCQs. Not waiting long enough. Oh, not waiting long enough for students to respond. That's really good, Robin, thank you. That's what I'm talking about with TWT, teacher wait time. So Robin suggests there's a lack of TWT, teacher waiting time. Andre says redundant ICQs and CCQs. We'll talk more about what those are in a few minutes here. Leslie says too much talking. Mm. Leslie says, ignoring valuable responses. Ooh, I think that's a very good one. I don't want to do that here. Nice responses. Thank you. So I have on my next slide here, I have some problems with TTT that are not exactly matched up with what we saw, but just some general, general problems. Some might match up well, some might be just totally different. But here's some problems that I think are common uh, with teacher talk. And again, myself too. Uh, mixing personal, mixing personal information with directions. That's really good, Dennis. Thank you. Not giving clear directions. Mm, thank you. So running commentary. This just means explaining what I'm doing. Now I'm opening the drawer. Now I'm passing out papers. Now I'm doing this. So we're telling students what we're doing, what the teacher is doing, but that's not really for them, and it's not necessarily good input for them. Rambling, I think, is what. People talked about about irrelevant stuff. Ungraded language, too difficult. Not grading it, not making it simplified for students, not making it understandable for students. The reverse, I heard someone say that there was a, that one was too, one was graded too much. I think that was number one. Not adapting to the level. Mm. Thank you, Yulia. Students don't understand the instructions and we don't really, we don't check. Um, so I want to suggest that three and four are kind of opposites. Too graded, too simplistic uh, versus too complicated. Um, T TWT, again, teacher waiting time. There's a, there's a real lack of it in some of the examples. Poor CCQs. Andre mentioned CCQs. Um, I think many people are familiar with CCQs, but some people said they're not. CCQs, we can call comprehension checking questions. And this is to, uh, to show help students show us that they've understood. Very simple way to say it. ICQs is instruction checking questions. So uh, to check that students have understood the instructions for a task, questions that teachers can ask. Um, Andre, you, Andre, you said the 
ICQs are redundant and poor. Can you can you say more about it? Uh, yeah, there was an example, for example. Hi, nice to see you. Hi. <laughs> uh, there was an example, for example, with the alphabet pasta, the alphabet mm. um, thing. And the, the, the questions were like, is it, is it delicious? When was it invented? You know, it has nothing to do with the main concept of this word. And for instructions also, there was, I'm giving you one, uh, I'm giving you one sheet of paper. How many sheets of paper I'm giving you? So mm, that's, that's, that's my the, favorite. These are, these are the examples and they, they can be even irritating for students. Uh, mm. I suggest, yeah, that's what I meant. Thank you. It can feel a little condescending, right? I'm going to give you one piece of paper. How many pieces? One yeah, 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 piece. Yeah, yeah. Okay. They mm. feel I'm stupid. I just said it. You know, we don't need to say that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, and then ICQ overload, I think, re relates to to what we were just talking about about too many. Um, thank you, Manuel. The, the says Manuel says the weakness is the lack of clear and precise instructions. Gives comments instead of instructions. That's very well said. Um, ICQs and CCQs, I think, are very uh, popular <laughs> um, among among people who take a training course because they're something that we can change quickly and easily and add to our classes. But sometimes I think we can fall into the trap of overusing them or not using them so so well. And I'd like to tell I'd like to give um, some examples of other problems of things that people might uh, usually think are good or useful. But maybe if we think about balance, we can think they're not always so useful and so wonderful. So display questions I suggested before are a good way to talk. When I talked to Alina, I learned about her husband's nationality. I, we, we all learned more. She got more chances to practice. When she said two plus two is four, it was very quick and just done. But if we're always asking display questions, maybe we don't really always get a chance for students to show us that they've understood. So there's a place, there's a place, uh, there's a, excuse me, I'm saying it backwards. <laughs> there's a place for real questions and there's a place for display questions. I want to say that display questions can be useful as well. Um, echoing is what I'm doing here a little bit. I'm reading what people are saying for the whole room. Um, maybe in class, sometimes we do this. We echo, we say what a student says louder and more clearly for the rest of the room to hear. This is something that I do very often. Um, but I think it's not a very, it's not always a useful thing because students realize they don't have to listen to each other. They can just wait for the teacher to say it. So echoing, we can think of it as a habit. And this is maybe something to analyze and decide how much echoing are you doing and how much echoing do you want to do. Recasting is correcting, but saying kind of in a gently way. Student says, yesterday I go to the store and you say, oh, yesterday you went to the store, okay. And I find that trainee teachers always love this because it seems so gentle and nice and not direct and not harmful to hurt someone's feeling. Um, but there's a pro there's a potential problem here with recasting as well um, because maybe students don't know they're being corrected. <laughs> they think you're just asking a question to continue the conversation. So recasting has its place. It can be very good, but it's something to think about to to think about how much am I using this? Do I want to use this a little bit less? Again, I don't know how often you use it. I don't know how much you love it, but it's worth thinking about. Um, very quickly, I have a story that I'd like to tell you. This story comes from about 15 years ago. I was teacher training in Korea uh, with uh, public school teachers in, in South Korea. And my co-trainer gave really nice instructions do this, do this, do this, and then do this, and okay, go. And almost every group just went right to work and got down to business and got on the task. One group didn't. Why, you wonder? One group didn't because some participants were waiting for the ICQs because we trained them that you don't give instructions without ICQs. There's always going to be ICQs. Wait for the ICQs. So I felt a little bit uncomfortable as though we kind of made participants addicted to ICQs. And we, we said, we showed them that this is the only way to give instructions. In this case, the instructions were clear. Everybody was ready to do it. And the only problem was that there were no ICQs. And this moment really hit me hard. And here I am talking about it. Uh, 15 years ago. 
15 years later, I should say. So thank you for listening to my lovely story. I could talk about it more and more, but I don't want to talk too much in a webinar about teacher talking time. Here's a quote that appears in the abstract for this session. I think it's a powerful quote. The biggest enemy to learning is the talking teacher. Many people believe this, and I think it's, you know, it's interesting to think about. But at the same time, probably, <laughs> but probably we have to talk sometimes, right? <laughs> uh, so it's too easy to say teacher talking time is bad and let's just not talk at all. It's, I think, a matter of choices, right? So um, here's a chart about the advantages and disadvantages of student talking time and teacher talking time. I'll stop talking for a minute to give you a chance to read it and I'll have a sip of tea and relax. Notice in the teacher talking time advantage, it says good teachers are good at grading their language. They're good at simplifying their language. So what I'd like to focus our attention on next is different functions or types of teacher talk. I said, well, we probably have to talk sometime. So I think it's worthwhile to think about what are we doing? <laughs> what are we doing when we talk? What kinds of things are we doing when we talk? So what I'd like to do next is to talk about uh, functions of teacher talk, things we might do when we talk. Um, and we'll make a little bit of a game out of it. Um, I'm going to explain it, but I'm not going to use the word. So your job as a group is to type into the chat the word that I'm trying to express. Okay, this is like, sounds like kind of controlling. Controlling sounds like a bad word, but it's like controlling, directing, focusing. Um, maybe when we set up, we give instructions. What's the word I'm trying to explain here? I'm trying to elicit maybe. Grouping is one part of it. Managing, thank you, Alina, exactly. That's the word I wanted was, was, was managing. So that's one function of, of teacher talk. What I'd like to do next is if we have some volunteers, I'd like people to explain to the group, explain to the room, just like I did, hopefully better than I did. I'd like you to explain a particular function of, of teacher talk. Um, we had a volunteer before. Do we, does, does, would someone like to, thank you, Bevin. Uh, would someone like to uh, volunteer to explain a word to the group? I'll send you a message. Uh, I'll send you a message um, privately, and you can explain the word to the group. Okay, thank you, Andre. I'll send Andre. Uh, I'll send Andre a message privately, and he will explain the word that we're talking about. Okay, I'll try. I'm worrying already. Okay, I'll send it to you privately. The word is typed to you. Uh, okay, when you try to um, to show and give the details about something to students uh, when you provide information mm -hmm. about the qualities. Uh, yeah. Someone says clarification. Uh, when you give the examples, for example, of how, to, yes, exactly. All? Right. Was it right? Was it explaining? Explanation? We'll count it. Okay. Nice job. Thank you. So mm -hmm. now we move on. Uh, what I'll do, I'll do half and I'll ask for volunteers for half. So it's my turn for the next one. Um, next one is a, a way to see if students follow what we've said. See if students follow. See if students comprehend what we're saying. Uh, ch checking, yeah, a specific kind of checking. Oh, like confirmation. Okay, these are these are ways to do it. This is good. Check understanding. That's what I wanted. Yes, that's exactly right. Thank you very much. Okay. Um. So do we have another? Do we have another volunteer who would like to explain a term to the room? If you can just type me in the chat, I'll send you a message. Okay, so Manuel, I'll send you a message and you can explain it to us. Mm. Okay. Make something outstand, stand out. 
example to show, to highlight language. <laughs> like highlight. We give a sentence that shows how language is used. Oh, like exemplifying. Oh, mimic is one way. Mm -hmm. Oh, modeling, there it is. Excellent job. <laughs> Thank you, Manuel, nice work. Back to me. Number five, uh, I think we got it, it's modeling. Good job. Thank you, Manuel. Um, I just did it to Manuel, I said, good job. This is number five, this is the next one. Or I might make a correction. All praise is one type. It could be negative, positive. Feedback, there it is, exactly. Feedback, perfect, thank you. Positive feedback in this case, feedback. Mm -hmm. That's the word I wanted, was feedback. Mm -hmm. um, number six, can I have a volunteer for number six? Just type me in the chat if it's you. Okay, Mohammed, I'm sending you the message. The word is typed to you. So you can explain it and we'll make our guess. Uh, okay, it means to get information, to try to get information from students. To get info, mm -hmm. go ahead. Good. Yeah. So it's to get information from the students. Yeah, yeah, they've got it. Elicitation, oh. illicit, yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect, we got it so quickly. Excellent job. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, next one, my turn, back to me. Uh, number seven. Uh, this is like just saying, hey, come on, you can do better. You can, you're doing a great job. Keep it up. So it's not exactly feedback. It's like encouraging. Exactly. There it is. Wow, you guys are great. Okay. Motivation is part of it, sure. Um, and we move on. Uh, we move on to the next one, which is number eight. We need a volunteer. Yeah, the word I was looking there for, the what I was looking for there was encouraging. Yeah. And we move on to number eight, and we need a volunteer. Okay, Alina. Again, all right, Alina. Okay, so I'm I'm talking a lot, and I'm 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 giving information. I'm sharing and uh, hoping that you know it can students can internalize it. Okay, I like it. Some people are guessing privately to me, they guess lecturing, they guess TTT. So this is one type of TTT. Explaining is close, right, Alina? Yeah. Giving, kind of giving information? Mm. Or giving, giving... I'm, I'm giving information. something hoping for output. Oh, there it is. Oh, <laughs> nice. Input. There has got it. Giving something hoping for output. Very well said. So the word... The word we were looking for there was input, or rather providing input. Inputting, yes, <laughs> you got it. Okay, and it's back to my turn already. It happened so quickly. Uh, thank you, Alina. And this one is when the teacher actively joins students and does what they're doing. So they join the task. <laughs> themselves participating that's someone typed to me privately that's exactly what i was looking for participating participating in a task participating in an activity and we need just one more volunteer okay matthew noble i will send you number 10 and you can explain it to us thank you so this is when you aren't you aren't really instructing or teaching in the classroom, but you're just having a kind of conversation with the students, a personal, personal uh, utterances, personal interaction. Mm -hmm. Sounds good to me. So talking, talking to students as humans. Yeah. In a personal way. Oh, someone says rapport, so kind of building rapport. Someone says connecting, building yeah. rapport, connecting, empathetic. These are all very good words. Matthew, anything to add? Something a little mm. casual, perhaps. Casual. Um, mm. Are we trying to create connections, you know, not just directly from the teacher to the students, but from student to student and kind of encouraging 
different people talking in different directions. Okay. It's like socializing. I like what Dennis said, sort of. Team building, these are all great answers. Facilitating, all great. Yeah, building relationship, that's the point of it. Mm. You're doing great, Matthew, don't worry. This was the hardest one. <laughs> uh, so someone sent it, someone says being empathetic. Someone sent to me privately chatting. That's what we we're looking for, yes. Interpersonal talk slash chatting. So that's that's what we were looking for there. So thank you everybody who participated, uh, whether you spoke or just typed in the chat or gave out your answers. Nice job, good teamwork here. What I'd like to do next is to show you just the whole list <laughs> that we that we talked about so you can be sure that you have it. Please don't get dizzy as I zoom through the whole talk. Okay, so these are the examples of what we just talked about. Congratulations, nicely done. And I do think number 10 was the hardest. And I'd like to make a quick note here um, that I got from Scott Thornberry, who I got this list from, from an A to Z of ELT. Uh, he suggests that the functions on the top, the types on the top, are what we think about first when we think about teacher talk, or sort of the usual common idea of what teacher talk is. But what's at the bottom is also very useful and something that we can do uh, and maybe try and find a balance to find more time to do. Like participating in an activity is not so common all the time, right? So um, it's nice to think, oh, maybe we can have more time for interpersonal talk. We can find more time for participating. So thank you for that, everyone. So we move on here and I have some examples of teacher talk. Um, these are all from one lesson. Uh, Matthew says in the chat, maybe being mindful about which function we are engaged with when talking will help us make it better quality. This is what I wanna say. This is exactly what I'm trying to say. Much better said. Thank you, yes. Um, so here on my next slide are some examples of teacher talk. This is all, these are all from the same, uh, the same kind of lesson. So I'll just give you a chance to read them. It's a lot on one slide. I'll give you a chance to read them and then I'll make some comments. As I said, I I, uh, I believe this is could be considered all part of one lesson, different parts, different examples of teacher talk from one lesson. And in my imagination, this lesson is a classic ELT activity of uh, find someone who, maybe with the focus on present perfect or uh, things related to being abroad, living abroad, this kind of thing. So that's my imagination. What you might notice is that these are examples of some of the functions that we just talked about. So we'll go one by one and I'll ask you to type in the chat box which function you think is being shown here for each one. So hello, how are you doing today? Did you have a nice lunch? Which one of these functions do you believe this is? People say 10, interpersonal talk. I agree, I love it. Chatting, yep, yeah. mm -hmm. thank you. Letter B, what's another way to say to go abroad, to go to another country, like to go overseas? I said abroad, that's the word I wanted to do was to elicit. So yes, I agree. I agree that this is eliciting number six. Okay. Manuel says this could fit with several functions. Fair enough. I just want to suggest that for me, I was thinking this was eliciting. The teacher has the word abroad in mind and wants students to say that. Example C, yes, go abroad can mean to study in a foreign country. It can also mean, it can also be for travel or business. It just means to go to another country. People say two for explaining. That was my answer. Providing input, okay, fair enough. I think providing input is like a larger text that has examples of it, but this is re that's reasonable. My answer was input. And if you have a different answer, I, excuse me, my, my answer was explaining too. If you have a different answer, I can, I can understand that. For D, if my friend went abroad, is she living in her home country? Is it possible that she went for business? Is she there for just a short time? Which one do you think this is? Some people say two and three. I think it's less two because the teacher's not telling as much as asking. So I think these are examples of comprehension checking questions, CCQs. So I had this as three with examples of, of CCQs to get to the point of abroad, to get to the point of meaning abroad. 
Um, again, eight with providing input. My sense is that it's like reading a longer text to, to give students um, examples of language in, in action. Here, my guess, my sense is that we're checking because there's so many questions, checking comprehension, as Manuel says. Um, e, quite long. <laughs> uh, what do we think E is here? So my answer for E was one, managing, organizing, getting students set up to do the task. For me, nine, participating in an activity is really doing the activity, like doing the activity as a student, participating fully as a student. So this is an example of the modeling. The teacher models it to look like a student a little bit. But for me, I consider this one one, managing, giving instructions, setting, setting things up. And we move on to F. Hmm, okay. You were studied in America? You were so famous that people studied about you? Or you studied in America? Some people say four. Interesting. That was not my answer. I can accept four. I like it. But I had a different answer. I had five. Five was my answer, giving feedback. So imagine students said, I was studied. I was studied in America. And teacher says, you were studied in America? Doing both, fair enough. If you want to say it's four and five, I can, I can accept that. Um, I took it to be five, telling the students, it's not quite right. But sure, certainly there's a modeling there. Matthew says, corrective feedback, looking to elicit a reformulation. Maybe, or just telling. <laughs> Oh, looking to elicit a formulation, reformulation at first. You were studied in America? Mm -hmm. And next one, G, error correction. Exactly, that was my thought. Uh, G, yes, I did a homestay when I studied abroad in Spain. I lived with a Spanish family for six months. Imagine the teacher saying this. If the teacher is saying this. Uh, okay, some people say 10. Some people say nine, some people say other ones eight. My answer here was was nine, but I understand 10. My answer here was nine because I'm really in, I'm doing the activity with students. Student asked me maybe, have you ever been abroad? Oh yeah, yeah, I did a home, or have you ever studied abroad? Yes, yes, I did a homestay when I studied abroad in Spain. This is my real answer, <laughs> 25 years ago. Um, so I imagined that I was participating as a student. In, in this, find someone who. And H, finally, H. People say seven, that's my answer. That's my answer as well. Um, so thank you for, for sharing your ideas there. And if we didn't see exactly eye to eye or have the same exact answer, it doesn't mean you're wrong. Um, I just wanted to share my, my answer. Uh, if you said five here, I'm okay. Uh, but my, my idea was seven. Five is good too. Um, so here's the whole list that we just talked about. You take a minute to check it, see what you think. And again, you, there could be different answers here. So next, what I'd like to do is to take a look at the examples that we saw before from the transcripts and think about how we might fix them. Keeping in mind everything that we've talked about today, whether it's moves or potential problems or what you talked about in your groups in your breakout room. Um, so let's do one together. Let's do number one together. This is number one. Okay, next, I give you this. Three people, you listen, circle, people, Mike, Kevin, Roger. Who do you hear? Circle, Mike, Kevin, Roger. No writing, circle, here in circle, okay. I chose this because I wanted to perform this one for you. I heard people say this one is too simple. It's so heavily graded that it's not quite natural. It's not natural. And maybe students would feel uncomfortable and it's not really great examples of English. Not clear. Okay. Any other issues we have with it? I, I think it's just overly simplified. It's so heavily graded that it, it ceases to be uh, useful input. So here's my version, not perfect, but just a, a quick rewrite. 
giving instructions exactly. Mm -hmm. So here's one example of how to fix number one from before. Next, you'll hear three people speak. It could be Mike or Kevin or Roger. Listen and think about who's talking. Circle here who you hear speak. Let's do the first one together and then model and then model it. Um, so that's just my example. Maybe not a perfect, perfect example, but that's my example. Um, so what I'd like to do next is to ask you for our second breakout room, I'd like you to, um, to go ahead and revise some of the transcripts that we saw that we looked at before you talked about the problems and now i'd like you to think about how we can fix them specifically you don't have to write or submit it to your group i'd like you to discuss um how you might how you might fix it here's your task here and i'll share i'll share the link again to the to the handout so your job in your groups is to just rewrite Number two, three, and four. Rework number two, three, and four. Okay, everyone's back. Almost everyone's back. Uh, I hope you had a chance to at least think about what you might change. Um, again, I didn't require you to rewrite it or anything like that. Someone said, eh, we could just cut the nonsense. <laughs> There's so much nonsense there. For number four, we could just cut it. Um, I wanted to very, very quickly show you uh, my examples. Oh, here's the first one. That's the original version. Doesn't even fit on the slide. It's a lot. Here's my version. Much more simple, right? What I'll do, I'll, I'll, I'll cut and paste this and put it into the handout so you can read it more carefully later if you'd like. Um, I don't want to say that this is the perfect version or something like this, but this is just one way. To, to fix some parts that I thought were problem problematic. Number two, excuse me, number three. Uh, number three, again, we could just cut the, <laughs> everyone's got it. These kind of useless CCQs, everyone's got it, good, all clear, do you understand? Um, these are examples of not useful CCQs, concept checking questions. Spoken bullet points, <laughs> yes, I think that's what I was trying to model there. Um, Big finger, counting, counting. Um, and here's my trick. I cheated a little bit for number four, and I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> Andre mentioned before the irrelevant CCQs. Um, here's my version, how to cut teacher talking time. This is the soup. It's got letters. Look at it. That's what it looks like. I hope that your versions captured some of that, or at least cut a lot of the nonsense that, that I had there in my original version. Um, again, the original versions might have come from my previous teaching a little bit. Forgive me. So here we are back coming to the end here, um, revisiting key terms related to teacher talk. I promised at the very beginning that I would talk about all of them. Someone says, do, I like to do self-training how to do teacher talk. Need to do it in front of a mirror and make my talk effective. That sounds like good practice. I like that. Um, my promise at the beginning was that I would talk about all these terms. Did I do that? Did I meet my promise? I think I didn't. Because I think I didn't, I nailed it. Oh, thank you. But I think there's one that I didn't talk about. I upheld my promise. I think you're all too kind. <laughs> I believe there's one of these that I didn't mention. Grading language I talked about with simplifying language. I said it's too graded. And I had the, the benefits of good teachers know how to grade their language. Thank you for the guest, Mohammed. TWT, I did talk about uh, teacher wait time. There was, a, there was a lack of teacher waiting time. Number five, grading, we did talk about recasting. I talked about a little bit. Thank you, everybody's too kind. But I believe I did not talk about number seven, QTT. Excuse me, QTTT. -T -T. We have teacher talking time, TTT. And I want to think about quality teacher talking time. That's the Q. So trying to find a way to make it as useful as possible. Um, if you remember, I told you my very exciting story from 15 years ago. I thought that was quality teacher talking time. I made the choice 
to tell a story, to connect with you, to give you an example from my training career. So I thought that was a, an example in my mind of quality teacher talking time. When we just talk and ramble and go on and on, maybe that's not that. So QTT, quality teacher talking time, um, is something I'd like you to think about what it means for you, how you can make the most of it, whatever it is in your context. So that's the final thought I'd leave you with. And thank you everybody for saying I did a good job on the terms, but this one I skipped and I hit you with it now. Um, so my final thoughts here are some possible next steps for optimizing your teacher talking time, to optimizing your teacher talk. <laughs> Meta tells us it's query transition teach tell. Goodness. <laughs> um, some next steps here. Think about what quality teacher talking time means for you and how you can use it. What will it look like for you in your class? Record your class time, teacher talking time. I mean, check the walk, check the clock. Um, write it out in advance. I did this for a year and it really helped me. Um, Matthew said earlier, classify what teach what what we're doing. Think about think about what types of teacher talk we're using and why. And then when we're in the flow of it, we can think, am I doing that? Am I really meeting what I want to do? Vary the balance of these. Experiment and embrace teacher wait time. This is something that can take can be very nerve wracking. We ask a question and we wait, 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 and then we just answer ourselves. That would be a, a lack of teacher wait time, TWT. And final one, number seven, is to pretend to have a cold. I wrote this a couple of weeks ago. And now I have a cold. This is my, <laughs> this is the bad luck that I had. I caught a cold because I wrote this. Um, <laughs> so don't give that advice. Matthew says, I love number seven. I do it often. Some of my best lessons. Mm. It's a really good excuse for not talking, right? Students tend to be enthused and refreshed. So please try it, but also please don't catch a cold like I did. Um, so I'll stop there. Um, here's some questions that I think are worth thinking about. I'll also move these to the handout. And I'll stop talking for a minute to give you a chance to read them. I'll stop there and I'll open things up for questions. If you'd like to type in the chat, any questions that you have for me or the group, or if you'd like to turn your microphone on, we have about five minutes or so for questions. Robin asks, do you ever ask other teachers to observe you and comment on particular aspects? Um, not lately, <laughs> uh, not lately, but in the past, yes, especially in different situations, different contexts. Thank you for the comment. But I, Robin, to say that I don't do it, much of my teaching happens to be online now. <laughs> so I, I suppose I could do that, but I don't happen to. I'll share the material for sure. Especially almost everything is, is on the handout, Manuel. And I'll, I'll add my example corrections to the handout. So if I'll, I'll share the 95% of the stuff in the handout. I really like Alina's question here. She says, uh, when training teachers, I struggle with some more talkative teachers and they don't understand why it might be a problem. How can I explain it in a more reasonable but compassionate way that doesn't seem like an attack on their personality? I love it. Um, I don't have a great answer. And if someone else wants to jump in in the chat, that would be great. But what I would say, Alina, is I might think about, is it really about explaining? Is there some example that you can give um, to, to help them see that? Uh, I'm quite a talkative person <laughs> as it happens. Uh, as you might have noticed, but um, I think when I've confronted sort of data, when I've confronted all these kind of questions that are floating around here, it's been helpful for me to realize. <laughs> Dennis with a good example answer explaining to them students need to practice. Exactly. You can show them the charts from Harmer that I shared before, advantages of both, but um, I think as, as you can personalize it, um, the other thing I might say, Alina, uh, is you know if you have some data, <laughs> you can observe the class and totally non-judgmentally say, you know, you ask this many this many questions, you told this many stories, you you talk, you told this many jokes, whatever it is. So then they can sort of confront the true data and say, oh, that's what's happening. 
Robin's question before was how long do you, do you have people come to your class? So maybe you can observe and really non judgmentally just describe, describe, describe what happened, and maybe it would sink in. Thank you. And I think Dennis's point here that maybe explain to them students need to practice their skills, not them. I think sometimes this can be a problem. Teachers like can kind of want to show off their skills or want to be at the front and on the stage. So it's a, it's a process to to get comfortable not doing that. Dennis says sometimes I ask how many minutes did the student speak for, then I balance my or their TTT to see which one was most predominant. So again, data, right? Thank you very much. Um, I think in the interest of time, if uh, if anyone has a question or would, would like to continue the conversation, I'll give you my email here. And I'd love to continue the conversation if anyone has any questions or, or anything like that. Um, thank you so much for your participation. It's been really nice. Uh, hopefully, like I said, you got some questions and got some some things to think about when next time you're in class, uh, you can think, oh, am I? Am I doing what I think I'm doing here? So Eden, I think I'm Eden has a few words to say that I've shifted from the front to the to the end here. That's okay. Thank Eden. you, Mike. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, thank you all for joining. Uh, we hope you enjoyed the fourth webinar in our ELT Classroom Connections series. And thank you so much to Mike for handling my technical difficulties so smoothly and professionally. I'm sorry about that. Um, we had to miss your bio at the beginning when I was cut off, so I know this is delayed, but I'll give a sort of retroactive introduction at the at the end here. Um, so for everyone still with us, um, Mike has been an SIT TESOL licensed teacher trainer since 2010, 2010, and is an important member of our community. He has a master's degree in TESOL with a connection uh, concentration in curriculum development. He has taught on the new school's master's in TESOL program for over 10 years. And in recent years, he's worked online and offline as a teacher, a trainer, an editor, and a consultant. So he does it all. Um, in about one week, we will send an email with a PDF of the presentation slides, links to the hands handouts and other resources used in this presentation, um, and any answers to some of the questions in the chat that maybe uh, we didn't have time to address, if anyone you know leaves any questions now. Uh, there will also be a link to our YouTube page where you will find an edited recording of this webinar, so you can watch it again or share it with anyone you know who wasn't able to attend. Uh, we'll be announcing the schedule for our next webinar soon, so please keep an eye out for any emails from us. And with that, thank you again so much to Mike for your insights, and uh, thank you all for joining, and goodbye. We hope to see you at the next one.